Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the 11th part in this series where we're building a personal dashboard app using Angular. In this video, we're going to be adding form validation to the form in the add note view. All right then, let's get started. Cool, all right, so, um, so um, let's go and go back to the code and let's go and implement form validation. So uh, let's go here, okay, and let's go up to this input and um, let's go here and let's make this required, okay? So let's go here and let's say that this is required, okay? So um, let's save this now and go back to the application, okay? And let's now try and create a note, okay? And it still does that, right? It still actually creates the empty note. However, if we go back to the code here and we go to the on form submit uh, here, let's actually console.log the form object and let's not console log this anymore. Okay. Okay, so let's save that now and go back to the application. Okay, let's click add. Okay, and let's open up the console. And uh, let's try and uh, create a note that has no title. Let's click create note. Okay. And let's look at this ng form object. Okay. Let's look at the form value. All right, so it says that it's valid and also that there's no value, right? All right, so I think something um, interesting is happening here because we've navigated away uh, from that component and um, we looked into this object uh, after we navigated away and it's saying that the value below was uh, evaluated just now. So I think that's got to do with it. So let's actually go back here and let's not navigate away. Let's save that and let's see if that um, work. So let's go and click add and um, let's now just go and click create note. Okay. Let's see how this looks now. Let's go to the form object. And now we actually see the correct values, which is status invalid and actually has the values in the value object, right? So that's actually correct. Okay. All right. So um, that's basically what I wanted to show you is that the status is invalid. And if we look here, there's a, um, there's a field here, uh, invalid, true, so it's invalid, right? And we also have the valid field here, which is false, right? Cool. All right. So um, the reason that it's invalid is because the um, the title field is required and we've left it blank, right? Okay. So if we actually just clear the console for a minute and we actually go here and we type in a note title like test and then click create note. Okay, cool. So now we have this ng form object here. If we look at this and go to the form object, cool. All right, so now the status is valid. And if we look at the value, that's correct. And if we go to this field here, it says true and invalid should now be false. Cool. All right, so that's pretty cool, right? Um, we're now able to um, understand if the form is valid using the fields on the form object, right? So. Um, that means that we can actually prevent um, prevent adding the note if the form is invalid, right? So here we can actually do if form dot invalid return, so that this code down here won't be executed. All right. So um, let's actually uncomment this. All right, so that it's actually going to navigate away. Uh, let's save this and go back to the application. Okay. And now let's try and click create note and nothing happens, right? So that's pretty cool. So that's pretty good. Um, that is actually working. What we could also do is we could actually show a error message. So for example, we could do uh, return alert and then say a uh, form is invalid. Okay, save that and go back to the application. And then we can actually try and click create note. And then we see form is invalid, right? Cool. However, we should actually put some more descriptive error messages underneath the form field, right? That would be a bit nicer. So what we could do is we'd go back to our template here and we could actually type in um, a uh, error message, something like, um, please enter 
a note title. Okay. And if we save that and go back to the application, we see it's here, right? All right. So we see it here, but it's very low down here. And um, that's because uh, of the margin bottom on this input, right? We put um, margin bottom on the text box, right? If you look here, we have 20 pixels of margin bottom. So um, to fix this, what we can do is we can uh, remove the margin bottom from the text box and instead create a new class which will wrap around um, a form field and any of the error messages, right? Okay, so let's go back to our code here and let's go to the style sheet, styles.scss and let's go to um, the text box and text area styles and let's remove the margin bottom 20 pixels, okay? Let's remove that save that, go back to the application. And now that's much better. So now there's, um, there is no space in between the error message and the text box. However, we want to actually add that 20 pixels, um, after the error message, right? So let's go here and let's create a new class, um, called form field. I'm going to create it here, uh, form dash field, and it will just simply have margin bottom 20 pixels. Okay. And now if we save that and go to the add note component template, we can now wrap this in a div, which has the class of form field, put these up there like that, save that and go back to the application. And there we go. Cool. All right. Um, that's much better. And let's actually go and do the same thing for the text area. Even though we aren't going to be putting any error messages on the text area, it's still nice to be, um, I think it will still be nice to be consistent and um, use the form field uh, class here. Okay, cool. Um, let's save this and go back to the application. Cool. All right. Um, cool. All right. So now let's actually make this uh, only show when there's no text in this text box, because at the moment here, when there's text in it, it's still showing, right? So we need to actually uh, use a uh, ngif on this, right? So ngif, and then here, okay. And uh, let's actually quickly go to the input and let's create a create a template variable here uh, called uh, title field, and let's set this equal to ng model, okay? So here we now have access to uh, the form field object inside the title field um, template variable, right? So here, what we can do is we can actually do um, ngif. All right, cool. So uh, inside this ngif here, we can now do a title field, title field dot errors dot required. Okay, so what this will do is uh, it will look for um, the value of the required field in the errors object. Okay. So let's, um, save this and let's go back to the application. Okay. And it's still showing. Let's see if we get an error. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it says, cannot read property required of no. All right. So that's because, uh, at the time that angular, uh, checked, um, checked this NGF condition, uh, errors was no because it's saying it cannot be property required of no. All right. So, um, all right. So I'm going to, uh, create an ng container and I'm going to put this inside it. And then I'm going to put an ng if on this, uh, so that, um, so that the, um, so that the contents of this ng container will only be shown if the if the title field is invalid, right? So title field dot invalid. Okay. Let's save that and let's go back to the application. Okay. And, um, there we go. So, so now there's no errors. And if we go here and try and tap something in, it goes away. Great. So that is actually working. Cool. All right. So now it's actually working. It's only showing when there's no text in this text box. Cool. Let's actually just try and uh, click create note. And I just want to look at the, um, the ng form object. Okay. Uh, so if we go to form, 
um, here we can see that that there's a field called controls and uh, the controls um, has uh, all of the form controls that we've set up here so the content and and title right on the title one um, I just wanted to show you this right because this is a form control and it contains um, an uh, errors object right and here we see that required is true and that's actually what we're what we're checking for here right so here we are actually uh, retrieving uh, the form control object in this template variable and then here we are actually looking for errors dot required on that object right and the errors object is this one right here okay this errors object here that has required true right so um, that's what we're doing here and uh, this is saying that um, the uh, required validation rule um, has an error right so the uh, errors object tells us exactly what validation rule um, is causing the validation error okay so that's pretty cool and uh, we're actually going to um, add a second validation rule here if we go here um, we can actually add a min length so let's do min length is equal to three okay so if we save this now, all right, then let's go back to the application and uh, let's actually um, leave these empty and click create note. Okay. And uh, let's go to the console and let's go to ng form. Let's go to the form object. Let's go to controls. Let's go to title. Let's look at the errors. And it's saying that required is true. Okay. And um, cool. Now let's actually try and uh, enter in one character so that it passes the uh, required validation rule. Okay, and now let's click create note. Cool, and now it's saying that the form is invalid. That's good because even though it's passing the um, required validation rule, it isn't passing the min length rule, right? So if we go here and if we just close this one and let's look at the second NG form. Let's look at this one, let's go to the form and let's go to controls, let's go to title and in the errors object, we see min length. Okay, cool. All right. So um, the uh, errors object now has a field called min length, right? Cool. All right. So now let's go back to the code and let's create a uh, error message for that. So let's go here and let's do um, title field dot errors dot min length. And uh, let's All right. And let's go here and let's say um, title must be at least three characters okay let's save that and let's go back to the application all right let's close this for now let's go here and here we see that it says please enter a note title okay let's type in one character and there we go so now it's actually saying that the title must be at least three characters cool all right let's try and type in a b c and it goes away cool so now let's click create note and it works Cool. All right. So the next thing we can do is we can now work on um, on the uh, edit note view, right? So whenever we click on one of these note cards, we want to be taken to a view where we can actually uh, view and edit these note fields, right? Cool. All right. So let's go and do that now.